Hello, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Stupid ideas. Um, yep. So today I'm messing around with jet engines. Uh, this is a post commentary because things look more fun in fast forward. No, I'm just kidding. Sometimes you just want to play and not have to talk to yourself. That's fine. And so yeah, today I had the idea um, to see. Let's see how high I can get a jet engine. Just going straight up, not going through the upper atmosphere and picking up speed and stuff. I just wanted to see how you could uh, air hog and just go straight up. So yeah, I just built a little rocket thing with a jet engine and strapped on a crap load of air intakes. And as you can see it wasn't very successful because it just wanted to flip out, like just flip upside down and fly towards the ground. And so, yeah, I figured it maybe needed more weight. So I've added a fuselage and some wings, and it flips out again. Yeah, it loves doing that. And it's always fun to crash them. So yeah, at this point I was thinking maybe it just needed more thrust at the bottom, so I just added some more engines. Because I figured, you know, if you spread the thrust over a greater area, then maybe the thing just won't flip upside down. Yeah, that's my limited knowledge of physics and engineering. Just put more engines on it. What could go wrong? And because there's more engines, I have more room for air intakes, and we <laughs> Off we go. And so yeah, I was watching the thrust, and as it was getting higher, the thrust was actually decreasing. I don't really understand that. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that um, the thrust is supposed to increase as you get higher, but... Yeah, there's obviously something going on there. And so, yeah, I try applying more thrust by putting turbo engines on. Surely that'll work. <laughs> uh, or it might just flip over because one of them fell off. Yeah. And again, the thrust was going down, and there, just the engines just flew off. They just detached and flew off, and bye bye. So yeah, I tried uh, the ram intakes this time, and I thought maybe the drag from those radial intakes was making it sort of flip out. I know the ram intakes, I think they suck in more air the faster you're going. And yeah, I started, <laughs> and then all the engines came off that time. Fantastic. And yeah, I started using the launch clamps to wind up the engines. Because, um, you know, they don't give 100% thrust straight away, so you have to let them wind up. And yeah, you can't attach four jet engines to those things, so don't try it. <laughs> I mean, you could if you turned on part clipping, but, well... That's not very realistic, is it? <laughs> so yeah, trying for a longer rocket this time, again. Trying to... Like, I put the wings at the top there, thinking that maybe if they provided some kind of lift, maybe it would keep the top at the top, <laughs> instead of flipping upside down. Yeah. I am obviously an aerospace expert. And there's the moon up there, and wee it flips out. Yeah, but I was not having good luck with these things. We just wanted to flip end to end on every single design. <coughs> yeah, bit of a horse throat. I just ate a crap load of bacon. But yeah, we, uh, 
I just decided to add some reaction wheels because I thought maybe, like I was using the SAS to try and keep it stable. I figured, you know, if there's not enough torque, that wouldn't do anything. So, you know, I just slapped on a reaction wheel and some RCS. You can see a little spurts from the RCS keeping it stable. And, uh, yeah, it goes straight for a while. <laughs> you get fairly high. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, I'm just going straight up because that was my stupid idea. Let's see just exactly how far up I can go. And I get up to about 33 kilometers, and the engine's cut out. I had an apoapsis there of like 45 kilometers, something like that. More air intakes, more air. And so, yeah, I, as I find out, so I actually skipped some daytime this time, so sick of flying in the dark, but yeah, as I actually find out, these the air intakes, they do increase the maximum amount of air that they can suck in, but <clears throat> they don't actually increase the amount at any given altitude, if you get what I mean. So, you know, past about 20 odd kilometers, there's um, like 2% atmospheric density, I think. I didn't stick a, a pressure uh, bar barometer, well, yeah, those things, science -y stuff. Yeah, I didn't stick one of those on to test it, but I think that's what it is. And so, it doesn't really matter how many air intakes you have. Uh, but yeah, at this point I think I decide to try the RAM intakes again, because I think they do increase how much air they suck in, based on how fast you're going. Uh, more so than the radial intakes. And so yeah, I strapped on a crap load of engines again, because more thrust is always better. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm using the girders to stick on some uh, ram intakes. I can only stick them around the outside again without turning on part clipping. And just some radial intakes for good measure as well. And that is a ridiculous looking jet rocket, but it flies. It goes up, and around, and around, and wee Off they go. <laughs> and now it's like a little ferris wheel. Gives me another idea. You can put seats on one of those things. And, uh, yeah, make some kind of bearing and spin it around for the kerbals. Yep, jet-powered, um merry-go-round or something. But anyway, yeah, this I wasn't having a lot of luck with this. I strapped on about three reaction wheels there, as you can see, but it just it really wasn't helping. Let's see, it just it just wants to flip up and down. It's um it's the air resistance, I think, from just all the stuff that I've got stuck on it and so yeah. It's fun to detach them and watch them all go flying off. And yeah, it's fun to crash these things into water, because <laughs> you know, these the little air intakes, they just pop off and just start bouncing up and down forever, like perpetually bouncing bouncy balls. And so yeah, I just decided to try something a, a little less silly this time. Just a simple thing with some wings and you know it's still with lots of uh, air intake 
But yeah, I just decided to take it a little bit more seriously for this final flight. And uh, actually gravity turn and fly laterally through the upper atmosphere to see just exactly how high this engine will work inside the atmosphere. So I was looking for any thrust, and yeah, it flips out there, but I recover. It's actually reasonably stable, this, <laughs> despite how stupid it looks. It's uh... So yeah, when the engine's cut out for a lack of uh, water, uh, water? Yeah, water engines. For a lack of air, you just throttle back. And as we can see, I just get up to 45 kilometers with that engine still providing thrust. But not enough thrust to maintain that altitude, and so it starts to go down again. And, yep, yeah, it's next to impossible to climb again. I start nosing up and trying to inch the thrust back up, but I don't know, it just, yeah, it flips out and goes backwards. And this is me rocking it around trying to get it to face the right way. But I don't. And it crashes into the sea. Spoilers alert. Yeah. So, that was a stupid idea. But you can get up to 45 kilometers with jet engines. Thanks for watching.